I am Bill Cartwright with Living Right with Bill Cartwright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am Bill Cartwright and I am here with the super millennial, David Barreto. How are you doing, David? I'm doing good. So this is our 500 episode week. And this week, our topic is the Green Zone Life. And today's Health Huddles, we are going to have a discussion on Green Zone Health. So living in a Green Zone, understand it. I think it's important. We talked a lot yesterday about the awakenings and what it's like to go in the Green Zone. But living in a Green Zone is actually a state of energy. And the Green Zone energies are the energies of growth, expansion, and optimal health. It is impossible to live in the green zone and not be in good health. See, to live in the green zone, we must manage the nervous system. And managing our nervous system is when we can put our state in the green zone because we're connected to a certain part of the nervous system called the parasympathetic nervous system. In the parasympathetic nervous system, our body and mind are connected and we have proper hormone communication and connection to the body. This is what we talk about, mind, body, body, mind. That is the green zone. So we've talked about this in many episodes that we are built for survival and our body reacts accordingly through its hormone communication or miscommunication. Green zone health starts with understanding the facts of how our body and mind work. When our body's hormones are in a miscommunicative state, our nervous system will lock into the sympathetic nervous system that puts the physiology in a state of emergency. The purpose of this emergency state is to conserve fuel and energy. This is the red zone state that people usually term as being stressed out. It's never a problem or outside circumstances that cause us to stress. It's our mind telling a story about the circumstance and then it's our body reacting to the story by switching the nervous system into that sympathetic red zone. So you can see how green zone health is never just physical. It must also be mental. Thus, mind-body, body-mind connection that we speak on. We talked about the programs and tribalization process yesterday. So today, let's focus a little on the body. Okay, so in the Stress Mastery podcast, our intention is to educate you on what I have learned over the last three and a half decades of studying the body and what David is experiencing learning these over the last few years of working with people and on himself. And it's not only the testing has revealed my personal journey from obesity to diabetes to living in the green zone health, but it's my experiences. It's, it's how the experiences I've changed because my lifestyle has changed from my 20s to my 30s to my 40s into my late 50s. Now, last week I talked about how a, as a culture, we're, we were programmed that fat was the cause of obesity that we see today. We've been programmed that way. And I talked about how the myth that there was no science behind the government recommendations and how we were supposed to eat and the food pyramid. Now, not only was there no science to support the recommendations that a low fat diet was the key to health, but the scientific facts were actually proving that they were wrong. Yet the information seeped into our culture and eventually into the medical textbooks. That's what happened, that's how they're taught. Do you happen to know if the new MyPlate, you know how they don't use the pyramid anymore? Is that still government? It's still, yeah, it's always it, government. Wow, I don't know why insane. the government still does it, right? It's like we updated it, but we yes. still don't know what we're doing. I, I, I don't get it. I don't, I, I, and to this, to this day, I don't understand it. I'm not a conspiracy, conspiracy yeah. theory guy, but I don't get it. And so we kind of, I want to teach, what I want to do here is teach you truths. Mm -hmm. and, and David always says, investigate it. Go investigate yeah, what we're I talking do. about. I sit with him all day long and I Google and I research everything he says, even though I watch him live it daily. But that's important because you got it. And then you got to try living it. 
That's how you learn. So I've stated that wellness is determined by the body's ability to repair and recuperate each day, right? That's mm -hmm. my definition. And we've discussed in past episodes the 10 biomarkers of health with muscle being the key biomarker of whether you're living in a wellness state of anabolic state of repair or a catabolic state of stress and breakdown. Now, Green Zone Health is based on this wellness statement. Green Soul Health is the body's ability to be in rejuvenation, to rejuvenate itself. Now, the absolute key to Green Soul Health is hormone communication. That is the key. Our bodies are built for survival, and the survival mechanism has a communication network. So, the two hormones that drive this connection or this connection are cortisol and insulin that make up the stress response. So, the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal access, we're teaching you guys this, it's the HPA access, is our central response system of the green zone health. It ties our nervous system, the red zone and green zone, to our endocrine system, which is our hormone communication. When insulin and cortisol are managed with the proper diet, the other hormones of the HPA access connect and we have green zone health. Do you understand? Yeah. I'm trying to make this really simple. So let's just look at some of those base hormones. Number one is growth hormone. Growth hormone, human growth hormone, helps us to burn fat as energy. And it keeps, and it keeps our muscle, which is, as I said, the main health biomarker. It keeps our muscle healthy. Growth hormone is affected by too much insulin. Then there is what's called IGF-1, insulin growth factor one. This is a second hormone. This is a hormone that regulates sugar and aids in burning fat. This hormone is affected by too much insulin. Third is thyroid hormones. They maintain the body's metabolic processes and the effects of fat burning, sleep, and anxiety level. They control this. This hormone is affected by too little cortisol, too little cortisol or other hormone imbalances. Glucocon hormone. This breaks down fat so we can use it for energy. In other words, it helps you burn fat. This hormone is directly affected by the insulin hormone. Estrogen progesterone hormones. These hormones are essential for women to function highly and, and, and I mean function from handling stress to brain function to focus. Now these hormones, the reason I put them together is they balance each other. Estrogen is your main driving hormone as a woman. Men also have it. Very important for brain health in men. But progesterone is the balancing hormone of estrogen. If you become estrogen dominant, you become imbalanced. And so, and these are affected by the cortisol hormone. So testosterone hormone. This is the essential hormone for men and women alike as it is the hormone that protects that key biomarker of muscle and it's the key for libido in both women and men, our well-being. And now, in doing, in, in looking at testosterone, what affects testosterone is the cortisol hormone. Mm -hmm. It affects it. Now, the, those doing, by the way, those doing wellness coaching and a pause plan lifestyle program, I go much more in detail in the book and share the new discoveries of other hormones. But for today, I want to give the basic hormones because it'll be a whole show on hormones, yeah. right? And these are the base hormones of the HPA axis. Now, we just talked about them, right? What is the hormone that affects each one of them? It's either insulin, cortisol, or a combination of insulin and cortisol. And you may notice that all of them are affected by cortisol and insulin, every one of them. A diet high in grains and fruits overstimulates the insulin hormones, which cuts off the communication of our body, and our, our body's repairing hormones, and that causes you to live in the sympathetic nervous system, the red zone. That's what it does. Now, the HPA access affects what is called the appetite regulating network. We call it the ARN. And it's the ARN, which are also hormones that communicate, that communicate to the body if it's to burn or store fat. It's, these are the hormones that tell you if you're overweight or you're at a healthy weight. The leptin hormone reacts from the fat cells. So leptin hormone is the first one of the ARN. It, rea it reacts 
from the fat cells to the brain. This hormone is reacting to the signals the body receives. It's reacting, and what are the signals the body receives? If you eat, if you don't eat, the number of calories you eat, it's reacting to the signals. Is there too much stress? Is it this? It's reacting to signals. And it, and it reacts to the HPA access and calories are taken in. This, this hormone, this one hormone will determine if you burn fat or you don't burn fat. You understand? Yeah. These are simple so far. Yeah, right? I think this episode is going to open the eyes for a lot of people, even though we say it all yeah. the time, that hormones aren't just testosterone and yes. estrogen. Like <laughs> they're communicators. Everything yes. in your body. is hormone. Yeah. Well, there, let's put another hormone. Another hormone of the ARN, the appetite regulating network, is the ghrelin hormone. Now, this hormone indicates, and it's in the stomach, it's, called, it's the yeah. gut hormone, right? It's called the hunger hormone. I think that's what's nicknamed. And it tells us when we are hungry and when we are full. So when you see a baby eat on a schedule, they eat every few hours. You don't have to tell them because their body is working in the green zone health. The body is in a state of feast, so it's telling it when it's hungry and when it's full. Yeah, you can't tell the difference between a baby getting hungry and Bill getting <laughs> hungry. It's, kind of it's like, on the yeah. schedule. It's pretty scary, yeah. <laughs> but, as, but think about this. As a child starts eating sugary foods, more junk foods, more sugar, the ghrelin hormone will fail to communicate because of the disruption of the HPA axis, the stress response. And the body will go from feast to famine, famine to feast. And now the child is not hungry at breakfast anymore, doesn't want to eat breakfast, and overeats at night and craves sugary foods. Now, I say a child, right? But that's everybody. But we can actually see it, the obesity in children rising. And part of it is because of this miscommunication. Now, the lack of exercise has to do with that also. We weren't, our ancestors didn't sit playing video games or sit behind a desk all day working. Sitting is kind of the new smoking. <laughs> it really is. It's just, we're not, we're not wired to sit. We're wired to move, right? So, green zone health is tied to diet and management of the stress response. Now, to manage the stress response, what do we have to do? Well, these are four keys. Full management of the insulin hormone. That's the first key. And that's cutting the sugar and carbs. Last week's manage, when we talked about managing the insulin response, we talked last week's a lot about that because we talk about the insulin index. It's the response of foods on insulin hormone. And now we know that's not just carbs, right? So number one is full management of the insulin hormone. Number two is eating to manage ghrelin and leptin, the ARN. Every few hours, we need to eat. And a lot of ways to reset ghrelin and leptin is through intermittent fasting. It's one of the ways we can reset the body. But you have to get signals. So when you are in a green zone health, you're in a state of feast, you get hungry every few hours. You get hungry every few hours. You get hungry every few hours. You never, but you never overeat. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's like your your alarm. <laughs> yes, it's like that, and that's the hormones communicating. Now, number three is you have to have adequate protein to repair the muscle. And you have the right fats to manage inflammation, and this is about having proper food combinations. And so, one of the things if we're talking about our number one thing is we have to have management of the insulin hormone, right? Well, the insulin response of foods. If you just have whey protein by itself. And you do it at three o'clock, you're okay, but you're getting an insulin spike. Mm -hmm. Oh, people realize that. And, and it's a protein, there's no sugar, there's no carbs, but that's the way the amino acids work into the liver to make it. Now that's good at three or four o'clock in the afternoon because what does it do? It brings up the adrenals and it gives fuel to the brain and it balances your stress response. It might not be so good in the morning, so what do you have to do? You have to combine it. So you always see I have my protein drink with nuts, almonds, peanut butter, something that's high in fat. Yeah, it's the same way with those few or those people who can't handle carbs and fruits and stuff in the morning. You have to have the combination of the fruit. Yes, you can't have fruit yeah. by itself yeah, food because is it will set it off. Back yes. off with other yes. So we talk about number one, manage the insulin hormone. Number two, eat on a schedule to manage ghrelin and leptin. Number three, adequate, adequate macros, right? protein to repair muscle, right fats to manage inflammation. And then number four is important. I think this is the one that we will talk about today for green zone health. Eat enough calories. 
And people say, well, that's got to be the problem why we eat too much, why we're obese. It's absolutely not true. The next popular myth that is causing the rise of obesity is the calories in, calories out myth. It's an outright myth. Health professionals are always talking about this. I can remember talking at Kaiser um, School of Dietetics. That's what they're taught. The green zone health is when we have high energy. This is green zone health. We're recuperative sleep, we're disease free, and there's no cravings. Health professionals, both in the medical and the wellness circles, always tell us that weight loss is all about burning more calories than we take in. Sounds like common sense to me. But again, like the fat is bad myth, this is a complete, this is completely wrong. We are told, so let's say we're told to cut, you're told to cut your calories, right? To diet. Less calories in and exercise more, more calories out. And this will solve your weight problem. Am I right or wrong? That's... Eat less, move more. No. I want to say like yes yes and no. But that's what we're told. Yeah, it's yes. such a deeper... Yes. So much deeper than that. Yeah, because that's what we're going to talk about. Because I'm going to ask you guys. Anybody who's ever been on a calorie restriction diet, and even if you exercise, did you really lose weight and keep it off? Because I know you didn't. Yeah, I, I had a coach who put me on a... Well, it would be considered what you guys would look at as a calorie restricted, but we restricted certain macronutrients That's that restricted good. the calories. So, like I said, the surface level, you're looking at in and out, but there's a deeper process. I will, I will tell you one of the biggest, this is probably to me one of the bigger issues because people are figuring out sugar now, right? This is probably the biggest issue. So, let, let's look in this and let's discover. Let's look how the body works and some studies done on this myth of calories in, calories out. First, when we talk about the 10 biomarkers of health, muscle is the key marker. If you are not recuperating, you will lose muscle and the biomarkers drop. So if we're losing muscle, which is the number one biomarker decreases, we then lose the number two biomarker, we lose strength. And then as muscle decreases, our third biomarker, our BMR, basal metabolic rate lowers, and our fourth biomarker changes our fat increases, our muscle to fat ratio. It's the biomarker number three, your basal metabolic rate, that is the key to this entire equation. We all understand calories in, right? It's what we eat. Cut calories, eat less. Common sense would tell you you would lose weight, correct? Mm -hmm. But it's the calories out that confuses this whole issue including health professionals. It's the communication of the body that determines if we are in the green zone health or we're not. It's the communication of the body that determines if we're burning fat or we're in the red zone and we're burning muscle and gaining fat. The calories out part of the equation is much more complicated than exercise. Calories out is exercise. And what it, this BMR is, this calories out, is the resting energy expenditure, or the BMR. Both exercise and the BMR are key. Now hear me out. So let's say with no exercise, your basal metabolic rate, your BMR is 2,000 calories per day. That means that you burn 2,000 calories a day to survive. That means that the BMR energy, that calories out, is used by the heart, the lungs, the kidneys. It's used to generate generation of body heat. It's used for brain function. It's used for replacing bones. It's used for cellular health. All of that, you can't measure that. The BMR is not under our conscious control. No amount of willpower will make your lungs or kidneys burn more energy, right? I know we laugh, but it's the truth. We don't control that. Now, have you ever done an hour on the treadmill, Dave, and then looked how many calories you burn? Just walk, a moderate walk. What will you burn? Oh, man, like a normal walk? You normal walk. 200? 200 calories. Maybe? Cal I'm going to tell you right now, 226 calories. I was going to say, maybe. Right? That's an hour walk. That... 
that low-fat bagel from Einstein's you had for breakfast is 200 calories, and the low-fat cream cheese is 350 calories. So the bagel kind of just wiped out your exercise, right? Yeah, the yes. philosophy doesn't work. So exercise is actually generally a very small portion of one's, one's daily cali calorie expenditure. So if you're eating 2,000 calories a day, your hour of exercise three times a week puts a rather small dent into your weight loss quest, right? Mm -hmm. It's just not the piece. So the experts tell us if we burn 3,500 calories per week, we will lose one pound of fat per week. That's the math, right? So we let's say, let's look at it. We cut our calorie consumption from 2,000 calories to 1,500, and our and and we're on our diet to lose weight, and our weight loss journey begins. Now, important for the diet to work. That means we've cut 500 calories, right? Stay with me. Make sure I'm not complicating this, Dave. But we've cut 500 calories for our diet to work. For this to work. Our BMR has to remain stable. Our calories out has to remain stable, right? Well, your BMR must stay at 2,000 calories or and your calories out has to stay at 2,000 calories and you keep the calories at 1,500 for you to lose weight. That's the key. That's the philosophy behind calories in, calories out, correct? Mm -hmm. And here's where all the calorie-restricted diets fail every one of them. Our bodies are built for survival and fat is our survival fuel. Our body works off signals. For our body to burn fat, we must have hormone communication. Now there have been studies that are over a hundred years old that showed the moment we reduce calorie intake, our body will adjust its BMR, which is its calorie output. The signal to the body is starvation. And the studies as early as 1917 showed that a calorie restriction diet will decrease by 30 to 40 percent the BMR, which means you went down, you cut 500 calories, right? Well, your body's following and it's going to burn less 500 calories. And your hour of exercise three times a week is not going to make up for that. Now, there's a very famous study that was done by Dr. Ansel Keys. It was, called, it was dubbed the Minnesota Starvation Diet. And now, even though the subjects ate 1,570 calories, that's about right. What, right? Average. Right? Diet, right? And, but this was a 40% decrease of the calories that the subjects ate on a normal basis. And this was, and, and believe it or not, this calorie restriction was met by a 40% decrease in their BMR and output. The body adjusted to it. The study started by studying the men's regular 3,200 calorie diet. And then six months on this 1,570 calorie diet with 22 miles per week of walking. The results were stunning. Now understand, these men were giving the, given the basic program of what health professionals call a healthy weight loss program, 1,500 calories of walking, right? That's that, that's what Those are some good did. clients, patients. Right? Yeah, <laughs> but I'm right, right? Yeah. <laughs> so many diets today are even lower than that. Yeah, I've seen somebody so, who came in with 900 for their day. Yeah. and that's so breakfast for some people. It's my breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so throughout the experiment now, I want you guys, these guys were really monitored. You guys look up the study. It's called the Minnesota Starvation Study is what it came out to be. Throughout the, the exper this experiment studies, men were thoroughly monitored, and here are the results. One, decreases in strength and stamina. Well, because their body was catabolic, it was burning its muscle. Two, lower body temperature. Well, here's your biomarkers. When we are burning muscle, the biomarkers fall like a domino effect. You ready? Muscle comes down, strength comes down. Then your metabolism BMR drops. Then your body fat increases. Number five biomarker, aerobic capacity oxygen decreases. Number six, blood pressure rises. Number seven, blood sugar rises. Number, you're amazing, I have this memorized, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was looking no, to see if you're no, on paper. No, number eight, number eight, the cholesterol rises. And then number nine, what happens? The body temperature. Yeah, it fell down like the a domino effect. Their the, body is literally the breaking yeah. down in the process. So they lose bone density, which is number nine and ten is body temperature regulation. And so the men, all of them, had lower body temperature. Number three, they had increased heart rate. 
Why? They're stuck in the red zone, which causes anxiety, increased heart, heart rate. Number four, decreased sex drive. They all had decreased sex drive. Why? Because HP access is, is, is miscommunication, so the body's not recuperating. They each had fatigue. Number six, they had ir irritability. Number seven, they had depression. Why? The, the adrenals have overworked. Their body is not burning fat, so the body is burning sugar. The body holds a small supply of sugar, so what's happening is adrenals overwork. Number eight, they were stuck in apathy. That's the I can't energy, the very low 50 energy. Number nine is depression, and number 10 was loss of concentration. Now, what are the after effects of the calorie in and calorie out diets? And this is the worst thing about these low calorie diets. It's why when people ask me, how do you lose weight? I said, stop, not, stop trying to lose weight. Diet, stop dieting. That's what I tell them. So in a study on the biggest loser contestants, and this was after six years, they, they went back and studied the contestants and, and each one of them still had a depressed BMR six years later, a depressed BMR basal metabolic rate. In other words, they were stuck in starvation in the red zone. Six years later, the contestants who ate, these contestants who ate 1,000 to 1,200 calories per day and exercised like madmen showed that they burned 800 calories less per day even after six years. That's what was the result of what their contest did. Now, think about it this way. If you earn $100,000 a year, David, and you spend $100,000 a year, right? That's your life. And all of a sudden, your salary gets dropped to $50,000 a year. What do you do? You adjust to it. You adjust or you go to, or you go to bankruptcy, right? <laughs> well, the body works in the same exact manner. If you burn 2,000 calories a day and take in 2,000 calories a day and then cut your calories to 1,500, your body is built to survive. So it's going to shut down fat burning. What does it do? It burns muscle, increases adrenal output, lowers hormones that repair the body, decreases its BMR, its basal metabolic rate, and increases fat stores. You gain weight. When you quit the diet, and here lies the cause of obesity, you go back to eating the 2,000 calories, but the BMR never recuperates from the 1,500. And this is it. The results are more weight gain. And the only way they can repair that would be, do you know how to repair that BMR? Uh, intermittent fasting and... One. But what do they have to do to bring up their BMR? Workout, cardio. And muscle. So think about it. If muscle is a key biomarker, this is why women don't want to lift weights. They don't want to gain weight. It's absolutely wrong. You want to lose weight, you got to lift weights. Yeah. yeah, but here's why. So think about it. So David, if this person was on a diet and they lowered their BMR and they gained the weight back and they want to fix the metabolism, they have to fix the muscle. You bring the muscle back up. When the muscle comes back up, strength comes back up, but then the BMR comes back up and what happens? The fat comes down. Now the scale might not move, Understand? Yeah, if somebody's happening with Vanessa now, she's like, "Man, I've gained like ten pounds, and she's, and she's lost all kinds of." And fat. I'm telling you, you gain five pounds of muscle, and lose five pounds of fat. The scale stays exactly the same, but your whole BMR has changed, and everything's changed. Mm -hmm. This is why we're stuck. The solution is green zone health, people. There are two compartments the body uses for energy that we take in as food. One is that short-term compartment. Glycogen, sugar, and in a long-term compartment, body fat. Now, glycogen sugar is easily used by the body, but we only hold small supplies. Body fat is not so easily used as it's our emergency survival fuel. To use body fat, we must restore hormone communication. And this is done by managing the stress response and by consuming a diet that manages insulin and the insulin response. It's the key. Insulin causes inflammation and imbalanced stress response of the cortisol hormone. Insulin blocks fat from being used as fuel. Lowering and managing insulin is the key to the green zone health. But insulin is a part of the survival response and it's not just avoiding carbs that fixes this issue. Insulin is tied to cortisol. Protein, fructose, fiber, these all play roles. Even vinegar and food combinations play a role with insulin. So when we talk about resetting the body. 
David's absolutely right. We reset the body with intermittent fasting. They found that fasting, periods of fasting, resets the insulin. But what we've also found is it's not the long-term solution. It is the reset, right? Yeah, that's why a lot of the guys that you see on like YouTube who believe this, you know, intermittent fasting or the IF is because if you look back at all their older videos, they did a calorie-restricted diet, then hopped on this and was like, oh my God, this is the and thing. It, Oh, perfect. They, they reset their BMR. They got into green zone L. So number one is we have to reset. Intermittent fasting is one of the resets we use. The other, next, next thing is you have to have proper food combinations. Mm -hmm. You can't eat fruit by itself. You've got to, and another thing is protein can turn into sugar very easily. So you've got to combine it with fat. Fats, people. Fats are the key. And then there's timing of the meals. It's getting, you'll know you're in green zone health when you start eating like a baby. And then it's proper exercise. You can't force the body to change. So what happens is people double down on their exercise. I see poor people exercising two, three hours a day in the gym and they never lose an ounce. Why? Because they're actually depressing the BMR. The body is burning muscle. And so if they're burning muscle, guess what? If they're not burning fat, you're burning muscle. And so what happens? Less muscle, less energy, lower BMR. The basal metabolic rate drops and they're actually depressing their metabolism by working out. So proper exercise. So understand, and I know I ran over a little bit, that uncontrolled insulin levels shuts down metabolism and lowers the BMR by almost 400 calories a day the moment you start your diet. You lose weight in the beginning. The body goes into, into survival and then boom. So the biggest loser, we talked about those... Uh, those um, statistics from a six-year study, 13 of the 14 contestant, contestants gained the weight back. All had lower and weaker metabolisms. In the study, the contestant that won the show had gained back 100 pounds. I, I, I really oppose that show with all my heart. In fact, it breaks my heart to watch that show. It is the most abusive. It is absolutely the most abusive show on TV. You might as well go, when you see those dog commercials and they abuse the dogs and it breaks your heart, right? Yeah. This is, to me, when I see what they do to those people and those contestants, that breaks my heart because I know it's impossible for them to have any quality of life. You heard of all the things that they were going through. Mm -hmm. All those things are the body in a survival state. David, sorry I ran over anything. No, that was good. I, I, like I said, look into it. Look at all the... Yes. Just literally go back every Tuesday and listen and see and pick out what works best for you. Um, and like you said about the BMR, nobody calculates how much energy it takes for your body to burn muscle. And that's also a process happening in your body. So Huge. when it shows like, man, I'm burning 2,500 calories. Great. Is 500 of it your muscle? Yes. Like, if you're losing a, muscle, yeah. you're losing BMR. Yeah. And so green zone health really is a state of repair and recuperation. For me, missing this is another thing people do. They miss meals. They say, well, I don't eat that much, but yet I'm 50 pounds overweight. And when they tell me that, the medical doctor will say, they're lying to you, Bill. I go, no, they're not. I know exactly what they're saying. They really don't eat that much. That's why they're 50 pounds overweight. So my calorie intake has been going up and up and up. I'm going to probably be taking in pretty close to 3,500 calories now. A few months ago, I was I was cutting with a trainer of mine, and he had me on fifty two hundred calories a day to lose weight. That's fifty. <laughs> that's five thousand calories a day to lose weight. Yeah, that, nine and, meals, and, and that's what and that's what you want. You want to burn fat. You don't want to lose weight. That's the problem with the scale. You want to lose inches and in fat. More importantly, you want well being and connection. That's the green zone health. That's it for today's show. Our mission here is to create a shift in a planet. You can join us on this mission by simply like, share, and subscribe. The links are right below the show. As always, until next time, stay inspired.